Hey, full system man, once again, as you can see up there, yes, I did finally see the remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. I know it's late, but better late than never. I know I said I was never going to watch this movie, but, you know, you hear from people, you know, you can't judge something without seeing it. I'm like, okay, but don't. If I hate this movie, if I hate this movie, don't fucking bitch about it, because first you're bitching, oh, you can't judge it without seeing it, then if I give an honest answer, you're like, oh, fuck you. But, Nightmare on Elm Street, okay, by Samuel Bayer. And I saw it, and I gotta admit, I didn't hate this movie. I can't believe I'm saying that. I didn't hate this movie. It's, you know what it is? I didn't hate the movie, I, I just, no, I, I loathed it, you know, I loathed, loathed it, as in, I wanted to take a big, steaming dump on this movie's face, I wanted to burn it and piss on its ashes with my gold-plated dick. I wanted to take the biggest fucking slingshot that would make Bart Simpson cream in his shorts and fling it, this fucking movie, into the goddamn sun. But if I did that, the sun would probably explode from its shittiness. So I don't just hate the movie. I don't hate the movie. I... aghast at the movie. I am horrified by the movie. I am... I would rather stick this pen up my ass. It'd be more fun, more interesting, and believe it or not, more scary. So, I just probably, I guess I just lied. I do hate this movie, but I don't just hate this movie. I, 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 so, I know this one, a few people, uh, I think one Springwood Elm or Springwood Elm Street, you know, watch my videos. I wouldn't bother watching the rest of this either two, three, four part review because it's just going to be rant. So you might want to just shut the video off. And more power to you if you like it. That's cool. Anyone who likes this movie is cool. But you said don't judge it before I see it. I watched it. I saw it. And I hated it. Go fucking figure. <laughs> I thought the advertising was shitty. I thought the trailers looked like it was shit. My friends said it was shit. And guess what? I saw it and I thought it was shit. Bid fucking work to do. Wow. And yes, I did fucking see it. I even took notes to be thorough. Also, this movie's pretty fucking forgettable, so I'm sure if I waited and didn't write this shit down, I would forget the movie. Because this movie... You know what this movie is? It's a cash cow, folks. Now, am I saying every remake is bad? No. Not every remake is bad. I like the Dawn of the Dead remake. I like John Carpenter's The Thing with a Passion. I love Chuck Russell's The Blob from 1988. David Cronenberg's The Fly. These are some remakes that I like. And that also doesn't mean that every original movie is good. There have been original films or films that tried to be its own thing or films that honored past films but did a little bit of its, its own stuff. Like Hatchet or Drag Me to Hell. But I'm not a fan of those two movies. A lot of people are, but I wasn't a fan for a number of reasons. Hatchet, because I didn't like the characters, I didn't like the humor. I even thought the killer was kind of lame. I had good gore, but that was about it. But the humor and the characters killed it for me. Drive me to hell, the CGI bothered me. I thought the plot was sort of, I've seen this before. I thought it was, you know, the fact it was PG-13. I'm like, folks, it's PG-13. And if it, the unrated cut didn't really do much for me. And I just, you know, I could go on and on. That's just me, though. But this film, the two, big, the three biggest things, one is the fact that it was a film that was not needed. And before anyone even fucking is typing their fingers, hear this. Hear it. I do not want to fucking hear, well, Robert Englund is too old. He would not be able to play the role. Or... Well, he said no, or they told him no. That doesn't matter. You want to know why? I know he's old. 
My point is you don't need the fucking movie made in the first place. Stop. That's the choice. Stop. And don't go, Will, you bitch about what would you have done? Not make the movie in the fucking first place. Don't make it. Just don't make it. It does. It's not needed. It's not wanted. It's not like someone sat around going, you know what? I want a remake of Elm Street. No one said that. It's the people who said, hey, do whatever you want, Samuel Bay or as. Do whatever the fuck you want. You want to know why? Because that title will give us a number one opening weekend. And guess what? It did! So, yeah, this movie, I have no respect. Even those films I did really care for, like, uh, I didn't really care for Hatch or Driving to Hell, I respect them more in the fact that they try to be their own thing. There's no respect for this. This is a remake. It's not like Dawn of the Dead where, you know, it just has zombies and a mall, but it was, it's a completely different movie. This, you have character named Nancy, you have the shit with Nancy's mom, you have a past that is somewhat similar but somewhat not, you have Freddy Krueger, of course, with the same sweater, you have fucking scenes ripped off from the first movie, so it is a remake, folks. And a bad one at that. So, don't tell me, oh, Robert Englund. Robert Englund, first off, he's always Freddy Krueger. Second off, he's been Freddy Krueger for eight movies and a TV series, and through all this mass marketing of TV, radio, uh, even, you know, little cartoon things, like this little thing on The Simpsons opening, where they had a little shot of Freddy and Jason, and there was actually Robert Englund's voice as Freddy, to... You know, all the magazines, the Fangoria, and everything. You know, we... No one else has ever played Freddy. So we all think of Freddy, we think of Robert England. It's not like back in the old days of the 30s and 40s of Dracula and the Frankenstein monster. Hell, Dracula, same fucking year, there was a Spanish version with a different guy playing Dracula. So it's not like Bela Lugosi was the only Dracula around. Not even the same fucking year. Boris Kloss, you know, Frankenstein monster... He was in it for what? He did like three movies, and that was back in the 30s, 40s. So it's not like this mass marketing of internet, or even, you know, VHS, and Fangoria, Fangoria magazines, and all this stuff, where every time you see him, you see that picture of Freddy, or you see Robert England doing interviews, or doing MTV music videos of Freddy, and as Freddy, and shit. So again, my point is, it's not that, oh, you know, Jackie Earl Haley did this, did that. It should not have been made in the first place. There's no reason this movie should have been made. Now, I say that. If this movie was a, one of those gems that surprised the shit out of you, and go, wow, this is actually really good, I would say that. There have been films that I thought were going to be shit, and I'm like, wow, this is actually pretty damn good. Or, wow, I was actually surprised. Or, wow, cop out. Now, granted, I saw that again, it wasn't as funny as I remember it. That was a film that, uh, you know, everybody else hates. And I'm like, oh, you know, I like Bruce Willis, but uh, the trailers are dead. Uh, but then I kind of had some enjoyment out of it. I know people saying, oh, you like that, but not like this, you have no taste, whatever. It's my fucking channel. But Cop Out, on a side note, even that film, you know, I like it less and less every time I see it, but, you know, I don't hate the movie. I'm sorry, I don't hate the film, but I went out buy my collection. I thought, oh, you know, it's it's actually not too bad, you know. I, I liked it all right. But this film, okay, first ten minutes, it's in a fucking diner. And guy sitting in a diner, I guess Nancy is the fucking waitress, and, like, this guy's girl sits down, and, like, you have this, before he has his jump stare, where he turns around, gets his hand cut, and then our first death is basically Freddy coming behind him, and he's going, you're not real, you're not real, and Freddy goes, I'm real enough, and basically, like, in real life, it looks like the kid has a knife to his neck, but he's holding back Freddy, who's, I'm like, Freddy, why the fuck do you have the knife when you have a fucking glove with four knives on it? But you don't have this kid cut himself with a knife? 
You got four fucking knives on your door, buddy, that you're just showing us and trying to impress us. And yet, you don't fucking... You don't do this knife, but you already have four other fucking knives on your fucking hand. Always trying to terrorize him. He doesn't do much shit in the dream world. That's one of the big problems with this movie. There's not much imagination. Okay, you don't do an Elm Street. Jackie or Haley, fine, you know, fine. It's not Robert Lane, fine. I still think the movie should just not be made in the first place. But okay, first... But there's no, not much imagination at all. At all. It just... Then basically the kid, you know, throat gets slit. His throat screams. Boom, Norman Elm Street. I'm like, really? That's it? The throat got cut? I mean, think of the way the first film, you know, way back in 84... A fucking woman was, you know, you know, you had the arms, you had this weird dream imagery, you know, just imagination, you know, the, the arms and, you know, the family opera type bullshit with the, the face falling off and, you see, imagination, because these are fucking dreams, which means you can do anything, and they don't really do much of anything in these dreams, you know. And in that one, they created the scene with, you know, the girl on uh, going to the fucking ceiling, being killed, slowly. And then basically, he's at a funeral, and, you know, they're talking, and they're like, wait a minute, there's a picture of me, but I don't remember us knowing each other when we were kids. And then you have Nancy... And this girl, this actress who played Nancy, is one of the worst fucking actresses I have ever seen in a fucking movie. This girl sucks. This girl is a horrible fucking actress. She should be fired from acting forever. This girl has no fucking emotions. Yes, I am fucking cursing a fucking lot because this fucking movie is a fucking piece of fucking goddamn fucking shit. Okay? This movie is a fucking piece of shit. should be tied to the fucking rails and have a goddamn railroad... Squash it three, four, five fucking times. A gold weighted fucking train. So it's heavy as weight, flat as shit, crumple it up, stick it up your ass, shit it out, and burn it in a fucking funeral pyre. Just like with Darth Vader. Of course, Darth Vader will probably smell and go, No! This movie will give me Tourette Syndrome. Like Halloween 5, everyone remembers my old review of that one. This movie, yeah, this girl, this is literally how she fucking talks this girl. What? She's having a conversation with her mom, right? And there's a conversation where, you know, she's also thinking, how come, you know, I didn't know these guys when we were kids, but it's, that seems to be the difference. You know, something's up, WTF, what the fuck? So she goes to her mom, um, mom, how come... We, uh, we seem to know each other. There's these pictures, but I don't remember anything. Oh, uh, and, uh, who is Freddy Krueger? The mom answers goes, huh. What the fuck? Like, you see... Samuel Bear ass. Do you really... Th this guy doesn't know how to fucking direct actors. Are you trying to tell me that you don't look at that performance and go... Give the fucking golf clap seal of approval? Like, literally, this girl can make you fall asleep in ten seconds flat. She is what caused narcolepsy. She created narcolepsy in half fucking America or whatever. This girl... If this girl... Like, every guy, you see a girl get naked, you get excited. This girl, if she's naked, if she started acting, you even if you saw titties and bush, 
It's sad as hell, 